Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Rancher. Now, today we're looking at the very infamous and somewhat rare full-time Dana 44 front axle. This is um, what they call non-selectable full-time um, all-wheel drive, basically, um, front axle. This utilizes a very special um, bearing type assembly that's pretty difficult to work with. Um, as you can see there and it took me a little while to go ahead and take this apart it looks like probably no one's ever been in here judging by the marks on the bolts everything looks factory original um, and it actually looks like it's been maintained because the grease in there doesn't look very dirty and it doesn't look very worn out um, it just looks old basically and it, but it, in reality it looks pretty good and it doesn't look like it's been greased anytime recently because it's just so full of grime so anyway these uh, came in on the mid to late 70s Dodge trucks um, W100 150 200 uh, they came in the five lug variant five by one uh, five by four and a half and then the eight lug variant and basically this axle was used in a lot of military trucks it's a pretty low maintenance axle but because of the way the bearing is set up it doesn't offer a lot of support especially when you upgrade to larger tires like let's say you go to 35s 37s 40s uh, the carrier in the middle ends up being very weak the rest of the axle is pretty stout it's all one piece all the way across and then you've got your center section the obviously um, famous Dana 44 so that's always good anyway I'm actually in the process of converting this differential I've got a cat axle in the truck right now and what the cat axle is instead of it being a full-time um, it's technically a full-time because the front hubs also are not selectable they're a full-time all-wheel drive but there's a center section device right around there that it slides this collar back and forth which engages or disengages uh, the four-wheel drive so if you wanted to install uh, a cat axle in a full-time four-wheel drive truck then you'd have to install this vacuum solenoid to engage or disengage i have a part-time transfer case so i can engage or disengage whenever i want but i don't like the um, drivetrain to be spinning in the front especially when I'm not driving on it so the plan is to swap the front spindles and install the cat axle spindles keep the axles um, from the stock Dana 44 and then keep the housing and everything from the Dana 44 and just convert the cat axle to selectable hubs but let's go ahead and take a look at this um, it took me a while to take this apart there's basically two ways to do it um, the way that I did and probably the easiest way for me was to install one of these uh, it's a hub puller you can buy buy them or rent them at your local parts store uh, 40 50 60 bucks or whatever and I'll let you borrow it basically you just strap it on to a couple of the um, studs run the nuts down and then start um, turning this and pulling on it um, I started to do that on this side and I just with my impact I wasn't able to put any more force and I thought there was something else wrong with it so I decided to take it off and then try it on the other side couldn't do it started hitting a bunch of stuff here which is why I ended up cutting this off because I mushroomed the studs I wasn't too concerned about it because I am um, going to be switching the hubs rotors and everything so that didn't bother me but then I couldn't install the the nuts anymore I had to weld them um, completely together and then pull them off basically it takes a lot of force to go ahead and break this loose after you break the inner seal and manage to pull that out the rest you can do it with the gun um, and it's actually not that difficult the second method of doing this, you see that there's this little hole right here. Um, this is to actually grease this fitting and allow your um, axle differential to be nice and lubed up uh, for easy maintenance. Um, but you could also use that hole to take these bolts off and you would take, uh, there's six, um, there's six, three, eight, 12 point socket bolts. So you're going to have to take them all off, try to fish them out with the magnet, and then when you yank it off, you yank it all as one big piece. Um, that seemed a lot more difficult and more annoying for me, so I just didn't bother to mess with it. You do have to remove it 
if you want to pull the axles out. So you can see here that I've actually removed it completely and it's just a standard C. I'm going to be cutting this and then turning it uh, in a later video. But you can see that I have the axle right here and then I've got the spindle up here or the knuckle. So you can see when you take off the, the housing, you've got the six bolts around here and you've got this little center section right there and the whole assembly just kind of sits in here. It's um, a pretty weird design. Um, I think Dodge is the only one who, who ever used this type of design. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention is that these differentials, uh, as well as the Chevy ones of the same era, have this little flat section here. Uh, supposedly you're supposed to grind this or mill this down uh, so you can add the extra uh, pinion angle that you want. I'm not going to be doing that. What I'm going to be doing instead, you're not supposed to, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to add these... Uh, alignment sh alignment shims to it and what these do it's a tapered end and i'm just going to set my pinion angle with these already installed so this i'm going to measure off of this instead of measuring off of this and what that's going to do is when i set up my leaf springs it's going to take into account that this is installed on it as well and i won't have to go ahead and cut that one and re-weld it and then do something funny with this i just need to install these shims in the right direction and we should be good to go same thing for this side we're just going to install the shims and we should be good to go as well uh, another thing is that on these setups where uh, the the perch is uh, cast onto the housing this seems to be a hair lower than that side and it's not by much uh, this happens to be about three eighths of an inch lower than that side so when you do end up doing your or redoing your leaf springs, you can go ahead and add a plate uh, to match the thickness and then you'll have the same height across on both sides just to give your truck a very leveled ride. Another thing to note is that these are indeed flat top uh, knuckles. So you could actually have these taken to a machine shop. They can go ahead and mill these down and then install the kit to switch over your steering arm uh, for a high steer system. Uh, that is part of the plan, but the cat axle uh, spindles always also have the uh, the flat section on top. So I'm not going to be bothering uh, reusing any of this at all. This is all going to get scrapped or sold or whatever. Something's going to happen to them. And that seems to be everything in terms of the differential. Um, very quirky differential. Very reliable if you guys maintain it and grease it like you're supposed to. Uh, that's about everything. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher.